Where I live, getting your hair colored and cut can be pretty expensive. It can cost anywhere between $150 to $500 at a decent hairdresser. So maybe it's better if I just do it myself, save some cash and risk that it doesn't turn out too well. Or <laughs> I go on my phone and I find a cheap round trip plane ticket, buy that plane ticket and get on the plane, fly to another country where everything is cheaper, find a hairdresser there and get my hair done there instead. All while spending less money than I would on a single hairdresser here. No, that's too- Welcome to Poland! Or should I say, welcome to Gdansk. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take this off now though, because I don't want to wear it in public. <laughs> if you don't recognize the name Gdansk, it's a city on the northern coast of Poland, straight across the sea from Sweden and Stockholm, where I'm from. Some fun facts about Gdansk are, the architecture here is pretty beautiful, traditional and cool. It is also known as the amber capital of the Baltic Sea. You know that Yellowstone from Jurassic Park that has the dinosaurs in them? That's amber. But most importantly, it's on average 40% cheaper than what it is in Sweden. And that's why I have planned 120 experiences for us to enjoy during this trip. Okay, not really. I have three things planned, but I just couldn't find a sign with the number three, so I went with 120. <laughs> These three experiences include a five-star hotel with a spa, swimming pool, and a private beach. Organized treasure slash scavenger hunt in the city of Gdansk. I don't know what that is, by the way, but it sounds exciting, so I'm, uh, I'm especially excited to try that one. And of course, finally, an appointment at the hairdresser where I will have my hair colored and cut. After each experience, we'll also compare it to if we would do the same thing in Stockholm. And then after each individual experience, we'll decide if coming here for that thing was worth or not worth. I kind of messed that up, but you know, worth or not worth. <laughs> Starting with... I know it just looks like I'm standing in front of a garage right now, but right around the corner is actually where I'm going to meet the person that is going to send me on this treasure scavenger hunt or whatever it is. The whole idea of this seems to be to explore and learn more about the city in a fun and interactive way, while also solving clues and uh, riddles and mysteries. Which, to be honest, uh, sounds like so much fun. And uh, people on TripAdvisor seems to agree as well. The only thing that I'm worried about is that in all of the pictures on TripAdvisor, there's multiple people doing the hunt, and I'm going to be doing it all by myself. <laughs> so hopefully they don't think I'm some weirdo or something. I don't know. It's a little bit cloudy, so <laughs> we might get some rain as well. We'll see what happens. Let's uh, let's go and treasure hunt. <laughs> I walked around the corner towards the meeting spot and that's when I saw my guide for this treasure hunt. Her name was Bassa and she was super nice but she, she didn't really want to be in the video but basically she told me all about this guy. Johannes Evelius, a famous Polish astronomer that this whole treasure hunt was about. Apparently some of the stuff that he is known for is making one of the first maps of the moon and also brewing his own beer. By the way I forgot to mention but the whole reason why I'm wearing these ridiculous wigs is because I did have my hair colored. <laughs> and I want to keep it a surprise for the end okay. of the video. That is so crazy. But anyway, back to the treasure hunt. Okay, so the treasure hunt has officially started and I'm a little bit stressed because it's raining. I got like some sort of tablet where I'm gonna find all of my clues and my riddles. I got a map and I got a letter as well. <laughs> this is gonna be fun, but it kind of sucks that it started raining. Anyway, let's do this. I quickly packed up my stuff because the rain got really bad and if you listen here, you can even hear that there was some thunder going on. Okay, there wasn't any thunder, but there was a lot of rain, so I made it my first priority to find some cover. After a while, I found an alleyway where the rain couldn't get to me, and I sat down to start investigating the tablet that I had received. The layout of the tablet looked like this, and it had this kind of pirate slash treasure hunt kind of vibe. And after clicking through and reading some instructions, I was given this map and a first location to go to. Okay, I'm heading to the first location that I'm supposed to go to. <laughs> and I just have to say... <laughs> that this is such a bad time to do a thing like this. You're supposed to be more people while doing it and also it's raining. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm having fun because this is so chaotic. 
Oh, all right. Even though the rain was pouring down on me, I steadily walked towards where the map was leading me to. But on the way there, I couldn't help but notice that in this older part of Gdansk, all of the houses seemed to have their own unique type of style. And I sometimes think that it's funny that we went from this to this. <laughs> of course it's probably because the later one is a lot more cheap, efficient and easy to build, but still, can you imagine if everyone just lived like this? That would be super cool. Anyway, I kept on walking and after a while I arrived at the first destination, but little did I know that this is where everything was about to go wrong. Okay, so the first question is that you have to look at this thing above this entrance and it asks about the lions. All is good, not enough lions, lions look the other way, too many lions. And I mean, I looked at it and <laughs> yeah, one of the other Alliance is definitely looking away, so we'll just press that. Uh, okay, I think we run into an error. <laughs> oh no, the Android started updating itself. I hope I didn't ruin the game. <laughs> but I kinda did, because I pressed yes to a system update notification. But it was in Polish and I didn't understand it at the time. So now not only did I have to deal with the rain, but I also had to wait for a system update to finish. And this was a problem because I only had a set amount of time to complete the treasure hunt. But since I couldn't do much about it, I decided to just find some cover from the rain again and wait until the update was finished. Can you see? 71% we're getting there 73 74 okay now things are speeding up a little bit maybe we'll get to answer one more more than one question <laughs> I kept on waiting for the update to finish, and since things were speeding up a little bit, I started to feel a lot more hopeful. But sadly, to my surprise, after it was finished, it just started another update. And it was at this point I started to worry if this bad luck was going to spread to the 5-star hotel and the hairdresser appointment as well. But fortunately for me, my luck was just about to turn. Kind of. Okay, so I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news are... Sunshine, baby! Woo! And also, this started working. But... It's in Polish. <laughs> oh, this is so beautiful though, look at this. How can I be mad when there's just like blue skies and pretty houses and we're in another country? It's hard to be mad then, but uh, let's try to uh, get this thing to English again so I can start solving this, uh, this treasure hunt. <laughs> I decided to sit down on this bench and try to fix the language back to English and I don't know why but at the time I just couldn't get it to work. Which is kind of funny because as you'll find out later on changing the language was actually super easy but like I said at the time I just couldn't get it to work. So I decided to just head to the next location marked on the map. But once again as I was walking along the street and following the map I couldn't help but get distracted by all of the things around me. Like all the cool buildings, all the jewelry shops with pretty amber necklaces and also a clown that was making massive bubbles. But maybe most importantly, a 7D cinema. How come I've never heard about that before? Okay, so I've kind of given up on the, the whole treasure hunt thing because it's in Polish, I can't understand. But look what I found, 7D cinema. I've never heard of that before. I don't really know what seven dimensions we're talking about either. Maybe if someone is Polish that can like translate what it says here on this text. But that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, it's kind of a shame with this treasure hunt, but whatever. Let's go to the next place. I'm not gonna lie, my morale was pretty low at this point and all I could pretty much think about was eating a fancy dinner in the restaurant at the 5 star hotel and then going to relax and chill in the jacuzzi afterwards. But instead I was cold, soaked and wet from the rain solving a treasure hunt that I didn't even understand. But nonetheless, for the next like 45 minutes or so, I just walked around in the city and tried to do my best solving riddles and learning more about the city of Gdansk. And actually, at one point I got to this thermometer that displays both both Fahrenheit and Celsius. Because guess what? Daniel G. Fahrenheit, the man who created Fahrenheit, is from Gdansk, Poland. This whole time I've been blaming the Americans for confusing the world, but in reality it was the Polish that came up with Fahrenheit all along. But what's even more crazy is that I also found out that Anders Celsius, the creator of Celsius, is actually from Sweden. Fama bra Anders, so jävla get! 
So in the end, I guess I did learn some stuff from the treasure hunt. And actually, like five minutes after I left the thermometer was when I finally figured out how to change the language, which turned out to just be this super easy setting that I somehow missed. So after I realized that, I decided to just try to enjoy the last part of the game. Okay, so we have about 35 minutes left uh, of this whole thing. I don't, hopefully you can see it right there. And I think for the last part, I'm just gonna lock in and try to solve as many of these as I can. Look, there's so many left. <laughs> and I think I'm just gonna try to solve as many as I can. Now that it's in English, I'm gonna try my hardest. Okay, let's do this. To be honest, now that the treasure hunt was back in English, I could definitely start seeing the potential of how fun this could be. Because it really was interactive between the tablet and real life. And they had even left letters around the city for me to find, which contained puzzles and riddles that took me further along in the treasure hunt. So if you actually were like a group of friends doing this, and not just some random guy recording a YouTube video, I could definitely, like I said, see the potential of how fun this could be. But anyway, I kept on solving riddles for a while, and before I knew it, it got dark, the treasure hunt was over, and it was time to meet Vasa at this restaurant to tell her all about the treasure hunt. Hello. So, that pretty much wraps up the first experience. The price of this tour was $39, and when you add the cheapest plane ticket I could find, which was $25, we end up with a total of $64. I found something similar in Stockholm that cost around $70, so the price difference isn't much when the flight is included, but considering that this tour included things like this. Look! <laughs> I got a diploma. Even though I failed, I got a diploma. And also, you had to be at least four people to play the game in Stockholm, which means <laughs> I couldn't have done it anyway. So with all of that being said, do I think this was worth or not worth when you compare it to Stockholm? I don't know, maybe some people are gonna doubt me on this, but I'm gonna say that this was worth. <laughs> I know there was a lot of failures, there was a lot of stuff that happened, but the most important thing was <laughs> that I had fun. So I think it was worth. For me, it was worth. But anyway, we need to head to the next location. So, travel montage. I actually have a confession to make. I have never stayed in a five-star hotel before. I know. Pretty, pretty weird. Since this is my first time in a five-star hotel though, I've decided to give myself some side quests. First, I want to go and check out the swimming pool, sauna, spa area. Secondly, I want to go and eat in the fancy restaurant. Third, I also want to go and see the sunrise tomorrow from the private beach. And maybe even do a cold plunge. But considering that the water literally looks green on Google Maps, probably due to the overgrowth of algae in the Baltic Sea, I haven't really decided on that one yet. We'll decide tomorrow when we watch the sunrise. But anyway, let's go inside. I thought the outside of the hotel looked pretty cool with all of the blue lights, but I was kind of in a rush, so I just walked inside and quickly checked in at the reception. I think the inside of the hotel did look pretty fancy, but then again, I don't really have anything to compare it to, so maybe it's better if you decide for yourself. After I got my key, I went to my room to check it out and give you guys a little room tour before heading off to the spa and the restaurant. Okay, so this is my room and... Uh... It's like a TV, um, bed. <laughs> I'm tired, okay? I, I don't, I'm, this is my room. <laughs> I didn't really have a lot of brain power left after that entire day, but that was actually the perfect excuse for me to go to the spa and swimming pool area. Plus, it was actually closing soon, so I kind of just rushed my way over there, and before I knew it, I had arrived at the spa. They give you these green bracelets so you have access to your own locker, but they also give you a towel, and I think swimming shorts as well if you ask for it. I don't know. I was gonna do like a cool transition, but then the phone fell over. Let's do an even cooler transition, okay? <laughs> We're changed. I have, I have different colored socks. <laughs> Gotta take them off before anyone sees that. 
When I was done changing, I made my way towards the swimming pool. There were some people there, so I was a little bit conscious about filming, but basically, this is what it looked like. There was one big pool that was a little bit deeper, so you could swim around in it, and I hung out there for a little bit, but it quickly got boring, so I decided to go check out something that is actually really common in Sweden. The sauna. I'm from Sweden, so it's not that warm. You Polish people gotta learn how to sauna, man. You gotta learn how to turn the heat up. It's not warm here, and I can't find a way to turn the heat up as well, so just gonna chill here. <laughs> They also had a steam sauna, so I decided to give that a try as well. Inside, the ceiling was covered in something that looked like stars, which was pretty cool. But as you can imagine, it was pretty steamy in there, so it was hard to record. So I decided to conclude my spa stay with the jacuzzi instead. And it was so nice in there that I just stayed there for like 20 minutes or something. But after a while, I went and I got changed, and by doing so, completing our first side quest. Okay, so that's the spa done. And after that entire day that I had, that was amazing. It was like, I couldn't have asked for anything more, so very nice. But yeah, now we just have to uh, go and eat some- oh. Oh. That was actually intentional. It was a transition to the restaurant. We're gonna eat some food. Let's go. <laughs> Before we head into the restaurant though, I think this would be a good opportunity to ask you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'm trying to get monetized here on YouTube and I haven't been able to yet, so it would mean a lot to me. But anyway, the restaurant. Let's go and eat some fancy food. It's uh, gonna be good. My first impression was that it didn't look like a single restaurant, but more like a mixture of a bunch of different restaurants that all had different styles. So I just found a table in the corner and I sat down and waited for the waiter to come and take my order. And after a while I got my menu, but I actually already knew what I was going to order. The most expensive item on the menu. The medallion steak, baby. Which is actually $40 and that's pretty expensive, but I wanted to compare it to the most expensive item on the menu in a hotel in Sweden. And also, I just wanted to try the most expensive item on the menu, okay? I wanted to live a little. Come on, let's eat the most... Let's eat the medallion steak. <laughs> I don't know, okay, I wanted to try it, I wanted to try it, and that's what I did. After I had ordered my medallion steak, I sat and waited at my table for a little while. And not before too long, I got served the lemonade that I ordered, and it was so good that I almost drank all of it instantly. I also got served some appetizer bread, and at this point I was really hungry, so I devoured that stuff in like <laughs> under two minutes or something. But then finally, after some waiting, I was served my medallion steak. Okay, let's try this thing. Look good medium that's what i asked for i'm so excited to try this you have no idea i'm so hungry everything on a bite here let's give it a try <laughs> it was good <laughs> it was really good <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I can't say for sure, but I think because I had spent a large portion of the day in the rain, running around like a madman solving clues and riddles in the city of Gdansk, and then gone straight to the swimming pool, chilled in the sauna, and spent like 20 minutes straight or whatever in the jacuzzi, I was super exhausted and very hungry. So I made it my mission to finish the food as fast as possible, and after I was finished, I paid for my food, took one last sip of my lemonade, and went back to my room because now I had completed my second side quest and it was time to call it a day. So now we're back here in my five-star hotel room. I tried making a room tour earlier but I don't know I've just been super tired all day so it didn't go too well. Bed. <laughs> Basically, it's a room and a toilet. I haven't mentioned this earlier, but I got the idea to color my hair from a friend and I thought it would be a fun thing to try since I've never done it. But sadly, I found out the author and creator of Dragon Ball, Akira Toriyama, recently passed away. I was a massive Dragon Ball fan when I was young and <laughs> really wanted to have blonde Super Saiyan hair at the time. So I've actually decided that's the hair color that I'm going for tomorrow, kind of as a tribute to him, I guess. Anyway, it's super late and I have to get up really early tomorrow to catch the sunrise so I'm just gonna go to bed nice t-shirt man thanks it's just a white t-shirt but I think it's kind of cool <laughs> I'm way too tired <laughs>
Okay, you know what? Let's go watch the sunset. I think it's gonna be amazing. Sunset, 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 sunset. If you couldn't tell from the fact that I said sunset a million times rather than sunrise, I was super tired this morning. But I wasn't gonna let that stop me. So I got out of my room and I quickly made my way towards the elevator and before I knew it I was outside where it was actually so cold that it looked like smoke was coming out of my mouth. I was a little bit stressed because I only had about 10 minutes before the sunrise but also because there was a severe fog warning which to be honest is a first for me because <laughs> I've never seen that before. So unsure if I was even gonna make it to the sunrise on time let alone see it because of the fog I kept on running to the beach and eventually I did arrive and when I did I wasn't disappointed by what I saw oh my god there it is the Sun <laughs> happy to see you <laughs> I don't know how it looks on camera but in real life it's so pretty but anyway now I guess all we have to do is decide if uh, we want to do a cold plunge or not and uh, I think I'm gonna go check out the water and to be honest it looks fine from here but uh, I think I have to go closer to uh, check it out for real so pretty. <laughs> Let's check it out. I mean, to me, the water doesn't look bad at all. It looks pretty good. What are we saying, guys? Is the water okay? Oh, okay. Someone's hyping me up over there. Nice, guys. I hear you. I'm coming in too as well. With the birds hyping me up, I didn't have much choice but to just get in the water. So I set up my phone and I started to change into my swimming shorts. And just to give you a reference on how cold it was, this person was walking along the beach with a really big winter jacket and also there was just like frost gathering on everything. But nonetheless, I wasn't gonna let that stop me and I started to walk into the water. And I wasn't really shocked by how cold it was, but more by how shallow it was. I mean, look how far out I am and the water is like barely reaching over my knees. But anyway, after a while I mustered up the courage to actually do the cold plunge and yes, I submerged my head as well. Woo! We did it! My whole body hurts. I have like the craziest adrenaline rush right now. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm like, it's fine. I'm not even that cold. It's like my whole body is numb, so I don't even feel it anymore. Amazing. <laughs> 10 out of 10. We'll do again. Hello. After I got dressed, I took one last good look at the sunrise and there seemed to be something going on with the birds out there, but I wasn't really sure what it was, so I decided to just start heading back towards the hotel. And the first thing I did when I got back to the hotel was take a warm and steamy shower, which to be honest probably cancelled out all the good effects of doing a cold plunge, but I felt like I deserved it after completing all of the side quests. And after that I went down to get some hotel breakfast and yes, I admit that I might have overdone it a little bit and uh, things got a little a bit weird on this plate I don't I don't really know what happened there but the breakfast was so nice so I couldn't stop myself I mean they had a machine where you could like make your own waffles plus they also had fresh honey like straight from the beehive and uh, yeah I just thought that was pretty stupid and funny <laughs> but anyway I sat down to enjoy my breakfast and after I was done I checked out which brings us to here outside uh, the hotel or Whatever. The total cost of everything during my stay here was about $180. There was only one 5 star hotel in Stockholm with a spa and a pool available for the same dates and uh, that was $320 for one night. But in its defense that hotel does actually look a little bit more fancy and I think the restaurant is a little bit more prestigious as well. But nonetheless this is the price difference between them when you add all of the expenses that I had and uh, this has led me to two conclusions really. I think if I plan this trip a little bit more economically Economically, I might have been able to do a bunch of similar things but then still had a total budget that was cheaper than a single hairdresser appointment in Sweden. And the second conclusion is that sure everything was actually pretty expensive here even if it was cheap compared to Stockholm but since it was such a nice experience I actually deem it to be worth. Okay next location travel montage 3, 2, 1 So 
we're finally here and hopefully in a couple of hours I'm about to look like this. There was honestly so many different hairdressers here in Gdansk that I had a hard time picking one. But I decided on this place partly because it seems like it's a husband and wife that own it and uh, yeah, I don't know, I just thought that was wholesome so I liked it. But also because some of the things that are written on their website. We strive to perfect the craft of hairdressing and provide you, our beloved clients, with an exceptional experience. From the moment you enter, we want you to feel warmly welcomed. That's why we always enjoy spending time together, chatting over coffee to better understand your expectations and create a hairstyle that perfectly suits your personality. I mean that sounds amazing. So I think I'm just gonna show them this picture and tell them that's what I want. I did also send them a message saying that I can't speak Polish and they replied with okay winky face. So hopefully that means that they can speak English in there. But there's only one way to find out so let's go inside and uh, <laughs> get my hair colored. Finally it was time for me to complete the main objective of this video and as I opened up the door to the hairdresser I couldn't help but feel a little bit nervous. But I was pleasantly surprised by a nice and chill interior and also this guy. Lucas, my <laughs> Polish hairdresser, that luckily for me could also speak English. I didn't waste any time and I showed Lucas the picture that I had showed you guys earlier and he seemed pretty confident that he could pull it off. So before I knew it I was sitting in a chair waiting while Lucas was cooking up some good colors to <laughs> put in my hair. And while he started the process of coloring my hair, he also told me how long him and his wife has had this hairdresser salon together. 15 years now. 15 years? Yeah. That's crazy. And we are still not divorced. Yeah. It's, it has, it works. it's a good achievement. I know I say this a lot about people, but Lucas was a really nice guy and we actually talked about Dragon Ball for like 30 minutes or something while he put this blue stuff in my hair. And when he was done it looked like a smurf had pooped all over my hair, but it was all good because Lucas gave me some tea and he also showed me this crazy haircut that he had done on his wife's son. Next time, next time I come, I'm gonna do this. Okay. <laughs> From this point onward though, my my hair actually started to change its color and since I want that to be a surprise for the end I'm just gonna put this Dragon Ball thing on top of my head for that <laughs> for the time being. The next step was cleaning all of the blue stuff out of my hair and I think if you look at my reaction here you can actually see that I was at a complete loss for words just seeing my hair in a different color. That is crazy. I look like you know the guy in Harry Potter? Yeah. yeah. Draco Malfoy. That is so crazy. It looks kind of good though. I think it looks good. If you haven't had your hair color before, it's actually such a surreal experience. Or at least it was for me, because it truly feels like you become another person, you know? Especially if it's for the first time, I can imagine. But actually, we weren't even finished here. We still had some more stuff to do. First, I needed to get my hair dried by two people, <laughs> apparently. And by the way, this is Luca's wife and intern. They were also very nice people, but they didn't really speak any English. And after that, the process pretty much repeated. Repeated. Lucas painted some stuff on my hair, I waited for a while, I got my hair washed, I got my hair cut, I got my hair dried by two people again, but after that I was finally done so I said goodbye to everybody because now it was time for hair reveal in 3, 2, 1... <laughs> Okay, obviously this isn't how my hair turned out and uh, I'm gonna show you in a sec. But first we have to decide if I think this was worth or not. The price of this appointment was about $60 and when you add the plane ticket for $25, you end up with $95 in total. Which makes it a lot cheaper than a hairdresser of the same level in Sweden and uh, essentially proving the title of this video. But anyway, it's time for you to see like how my hair turned out and for me to decide if this was worth or not. Are you ready? I think that this was not worth. No, I'm joking. I thought it was worth. It was a fun trip. But yeah, this is how I look now. And this is how I'm gonna look for a while. I definitely kind of look like Trunks from Dragon Ball. <laughs> Comment what you think. I love you guys. <laughs> Take care. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>